Welcome to a video about the Toshiba Video Cassette Recorder, a VHS HQ machine, model number DX7. Now, normally I don't start at the back side of the VCR, but we're going to do that for this video. This one was made in the mid 80s, and it is a four head hi fi stereo VHS VCR. On the back here, you'll see your UHF in and out for the antenna, your aerial antenna, as well as the same for your VHF. So you've got your coaxial up here and your standard down here. Over here, we've got our audio and video outputs. So we've got two composite jacks for video and a set of RCA jacks for both in and out audio. And now here's the view you've been waiting for, the front of this amazing VCR from 1988. That's the exact year it was released. The company Toshiba boasted that this machine had the ability to freeze live TV using uh, a little feature that we'll go over shortly. And it also had the ability to freeze all my children, which was a soap opera at that time. I don't know what the tie in was specifically to that soap opera. But anyway, we'll go over the circuit boards inside it because it has several. We'll go over the mechanics and what it does to make this thing tick and what was wrong with it mechanically for me to get it working. And then we'll go over another mysterious feature. If you look on the underside of this VCR, there is a protrusion from the bottom, a black area that you see right there. Why in the world would this VCR have something protruding out of the bottom of it? Well, we'll get to the bottom of that here shortly. But first, let's go ahead and put the VCR on the scale because I want you to see just how much this beast weighs. This VCR weighs in at exactly 20 pounds, 4.1 ounces. So this is not a lightweight VCR. Yes, indeed, Doc. It is unbelievable that this unit was made in Japan, and it is the best stuff. How'd you like that little drop out there on the tape? That was kind of cool. And then the audio drops out with it. Of course, this Toshiba was made in Japan. It is a Japanese-made VCR. Let's go over two different aspects of it. One is a plethora of circuit boards, and secondly, the mechanics, okay? So first off, let's look at the boards. There is like a huge circuit board here on the right, and there's not just one, there's three of them. Oh yeah, there are three circuit boards in this thing, okay? So there's circuit board number one, circuit board number two, circuit board number three, okay? So you have three stories of circuit boards. One, two, three, and if you just didn't have enough circuit boards, how about I throw in another circuit board here and this circuit board goes over the video head. Okay, so it kind of locks into place right here. So if you didn't have enough circuit boards, you got that one too. And you said, you know what, Brad, I wish it had more circuit boards. Okay, how about a circuit board that's protruding from the bottom of the VCR? Oh yeah, there it is, that big metal thing right there, that little casing right there, unbelievable. So uh, the mechanics, here is the bottom side of the mechanics. Now the cool thing is this thing has several motors in it, independent motors for different aspects of the unit. So this is your capstan here. So your flywheel is a uh, direct drive motor. Then you have a motor here that operates your fast forward and rewind. Then you have a, a motor here that it's your video head, turns your video head there. Then on top, just when you thought that wasn't enough motors, You've got a motor right here that puts the tape in and pulls the tape out as part of the carriage. And then you've got a motor under here. And this motor I ended up having to replace. I have never had to replace a motor in a VCR before. But there is where my new one is hot wired in. Not only is the original motor loud, but it's also very weak. It sounds like a power tool or something. So imagine hitting play on the VCR and hearing that coming from inside. That was pretty frightening. So this little guy got replaced. So this one took it out 
and I actually had one that would fit into that same slot. And you have to forgive my taping of the wires there, but it was kind of like, okay, is this going to work or not? I'm just going to kind of tape the wires up until uh, I can figure this out. Mechanically, this unit, uh, this motor here, turns this little wheel, which in turn turns like a worm gear right there, which in turn turns this big round wheel on the underside, which really handles a lot of the functionality of this machine. So if I hit fast forward, for example, notice it whirring into place there, hitting stop, it turns again, hitting rewind, it turns again. So it's directing the path of gears and guides and so forth. And then if I hit play, it really goes crazy. So watch this. I'm going to hit play now. This machine is very weak, especially for a VCR of this caliber. You would think that this thing was just immaculately strong, but it isn't. But uh, you'll see just how slowly and reluctantly this thing moves into place. Let me go ahead and hit play again so you can see that. See, it just takes its time getting into place there. And then that's what the audio and video looks like. And you can see there's some dropouts there. I was using this tape to uh, do the testing. Of course, if you're going to work on a VCR, you got to pick a movie that you really like. Cause you're going to be watching sections of it over and over again. So when I first got it, I thought it can't be the motor. Surely it isn't the motor. Maybe it's the belt. So put a different belt on it. Didn't make any difference. So I put the old belt back on. Then, of course, it was noisy. So I replaced the motor. But in the meantime, I had worked on the underside of it. And I had removed this white plastic piece that you see right here. So this piece right here... This cover holds these two gears into place, all right? So both of these gears, this one is turned by the worm gear on the top, which in turn turns this gear, which in turn turns this big metal gear, which in turn moves the two guides forward to put the tape into the thread path of the video head. So when I pulled this off, there was a spring that was attached to this particular gear and it popped off and I like to never figured out where it went but it had to be on there just right this had to be just right because if it wasn't then the guides were too far in or too far out so it took a lot of trial and error to get these gears back in synchronization if you've ever had a laser displayer drawer come out of gear and be out of sync uh, it's really not a fun situation to be in and this was very similar to that uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit play so you can kind of see all this rolling together here. And I even greased the guides on there, which helped a little bit, but it didn't really fix the situation. Let's spend a few minutes just talking about the features of this thing. It is absolutely feature packed with a billion buttons on the front. Okay, not quite a billion, but a lot. There are several buttons here on here that I don't know what they do. Uh, two things. We're going to look at the channel tuner here and how to set presets. It's very funky the way you set these channel presets. Unlike newer VCRs where you just hit a button and it goes through and searches all the channels and, and gives you uh, all of your presets set, this is more like setting presets on a radio. It's very, very unique. So we'll go over that real quick because, and in a, in a short moment, because this button here is going to work with the tuner as well. So you're able to pause live TV with this TV still button. Now you can't pick it up and continue watching it from where you paused it, but you can still pause it. So kind of an interesting feature for back then. Obviously your major controls are here. You have eject and power there and a, uh, a headphone jack there. Opening this little door here at the bottom will reveal a lot more controls. Phones level here, so that goes with your phones there. Picture sharpness control, and again these sliders slide left to right. Tracking control here does not have digital tracking, strangely enough. CFM, not sure what that button does, but you have a CFM button there. Set, clock, so all of this from here all the way down to here and here essentially are for setting uh, timer recordings to be recorded later. 
Uh, and there's your timer button here, one touch recording, record button right there. Um, all the way to the end of that is your speed here, your SP and EP, which if I press there, you can see it there on the screen. This machine obviously does not have the LP speed. Down here we have HP Select, which I don't know what that does either. I don't think it means headphone select, but it may have something to do with editing because it has normal HP and edit. HP Select. Maybe one of you guys can tell me what that means. We have a stereo uh, normal audio here that's left plus right on the left position. The right switch is for secondary audio program, which broadcasts over the air stereo television brought a feature that allowed you to listen to a secondary audio program, hence a foreign language or another language or maybe even some uh, descriptive audio. Your meter switch here gives you two options, level and hi-fi tracking. You can use these two meters to measure how much tracking signal you have, the strength of the tracking, or you can just monitor the regular audio level. Your input select here is pretty cool. You have TV, line, and AV mix. TV and line are self explore or explanatory. TV and line are self-explanatory. Uh, you can switch, switch to your internal TV tuner or input for a line such as a laser disc player, video disc player. And then you have AV mix. AV mix allowed you to pull over the video from over the air broadcasting but then allowed you to pull audio from say like an FM radio station that was doing a stereo simulcast. And before stereo TV, that was actually a pretty cool deal. I remember doing that one time, watching a movie in stereo over the air uh, using our family TV when I was a kid. MPX filter. Now I have something, I have a feeling that has something to do with multiplex and stereo. Uh, again, not real sure. Uh, here we have record level, which is MPX filter, auto, and manual. Manual allows you to use these controls over here. So I can turn these two sliders up and down and set my record level manually. So that was great for people who use their hi-fi stereo VCRs for audio recording. Your output selector is here. So that selects between the hi-fi audio signal and the linear tracks normal tracks that are found also on a videotape. So you may not have known that there are two audio systems on all of your VHS movies. So we also have some buttons up here, stereo left and right, stereo LR, uh, reset, that's for the tape counter right there, memory, so you can come back to a particular spot, AVI, I don't know what that button does, and again, channel. Let's look at this tuner here real quick and we'll actually set a preset. So in my basement, I have a digital broadcasting, uh, well, it's not digital. It's an analog broadcasting tuner that's broadcasting channel 27 from a over the air uh, digital tuner. Oh, there, there's the digital part of it. So what you do is you go over here to this control panel and first you pick the preset that you wanna pick and then you, you select the channel button that you want. Then you select the band so and it brings up a, the 11th preset and the tuner is set to, um, see we have low band, high band, ultra high band, C for cable, okay. I think that's what that means. Cable, low, high, ultra high, cable, low, I think that's what that means. Okay. And then, uh, so first I'm going to put it on U cause that's UHF cause I want to broadcast channel 27. And then I'm going to press this button up here. Here's, these are the buttons I'm working from. Okay. And I apologize for the dimness of this display, but it just is really old. So I'm holding down the tuning button in an attempt to find a station. So after having my finger nailed onto this button right here for a significant amount of time, eventually I ran into channel 27 on my tuner and now it is displaying on my TV. So when I look down here on the display panel, it is not showing 27, it's showing channel 19. So now I can pick the actual channel that I want by pressing these other two buttons 
and I can select channel 20, four, five, six, seven. So there we go. Now I have preset number 11 on the ultra high band UHF and on uh, 27. And so I hit the preset button again and it is locked in now. So if I do a channel change here, it takes me to channel 82, which has nothing on it. And I come back down, hit it again. Hey, there's my channel 27. Now the joy of this is if the power goes out for a significant amount of time, you lose your presets. Isn't that great? All right, guys. So now as promised, I'm going to show you the functionality of this TV still button here. And that is after I've gotten my preset set and I've got a picture up on my screen. So guess what? Here it is. This is TV still. So the button has been pressed. Now I'll press it again. We go back to what was coming through on the TV. Let's say you had something on the TV and you wanted to write it down, you know, like a phone number for a home shopping club or something. All right, so I can go ahead and wait for some for the message to appear. There we go. So now I want to try the new ribeye burger and I want to read all about it. Now I can see what it looks like. So needless to say, the resolution is not that great for uh, a digital still. But then again, we're, we're pulling in a analog video signal as well. So there we go. Pause, unpause. So there you go. Pretty cool feature, right?